Hey everyone, it's Fox with Foxy Plays, and this is episode one of our Tokiden Kiwami playthrough on the PlayStation 4. This was originally a PS Vita exclusive as Tokiden. Then they released sort of like a definitive version, added some stuff to it, some new weapons and whatnot, and called it Tokiden Kiwami. Alright, let's name our character. Let's see, how about... The character name we use almost all the time. Shao Ling. Shaolin. Shaolin. How about that? Done. Female? And what kind of hairstyle do we want here? We'll look at an angle so we can get a good hairstyle going. Some games just don't give you good hairstyles. This is essentially a game just like God Eater Burst or Freedom Wars. Um, the closest comparison I can give you to a very popular game would be Monster Hunter. It's kind of like Monster Hunter if you streamlined it and made it more about the action and less about the gathering and crafting. Look at all these hairstyles. Some of them look terrible. Okay, let's go with that one right there. And for hair color, what should we do? Like maybe pink? Why not? That's a normal looking color, isn't it? And skin color, we'll get... we'll go a little darker here. I guess that's alright. Voice, let's test these out! You're gonna be hearing these voices a lot, so it's best to pick one that doesn't annoy you. Uh, let's see. So far, I like four. Alright, let's stick with four. Four is good enough for me. Confirm. Starting weapon, you get to choose from any of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They added some new weapons in Tokiden Kiwami versus the original Tokiden. Um, I've used, I've mainly used the, where is it, uh, spear before, so I'm fairly proficient with the spear, at least as far as I can remember, and I'm wondering if I should stick with something I know, or go with something I don't know. Oh yeah, the Naginata, or the rifle, I think the, I think the Naginata and the rifle are the two new things they added. Tell you what, guys. I will pick something new because I've already used the spear extensively. A well-balanced, easy-to-use long weapon. How about the sword? The sword's very basic. It shouldn't be very uh, shouldn't be very difficult to use the sword. All right, we'll pick that. There are some uh, sessions where you pretty much have to sit and watch cutscenes and, and all that good stuff. We'll skip through most of it as best we can because that's just what I do, guys. I like to skip cutscenes and dialogue and all that, because you can check that stuff out when you play for yourself. Ironically enough, not ironically, but strangely enough, that's what I meant to say, you have to hit the touchpad to skip cutscenes in this game. You can't hit the options button, which is like the equivalent of the start button. Now this is a base character that they just let you play as, this is kind of like something from the past. So don't worry too much about this, it's just meant to kind of quickly familiarize you with the game. There we go. Oh, shoot. Got the dodge in time. Ah, shoot. I don't know why she stopped right there and did that. Ah, I gotta get used to the controls again. It's been so long since I played this. Uh, that's not it. Here, let's see. Square, triangle, and circle. Got it. Now the one cool thing about this is you can chop off certain body parts and you also go into like the spirit mode where you're supposed to like destroy a, their spiritual parts or something. It's, it's kind of funky. Um, it makes more sense when you're doing it. And then you can charge attacks. And every weapon has some special uh, little features about it, special ways to use it, just like Monster Hunter or um, a game like God Eater Burst. This is definitely more like God Eater Burst. Gosh darn it, I keep rolling right into it. But most of you guys will know Monster Hunter more than God Eater Burst. God Eater Burst did come out in the US. It was a um, 
PlayStation Portable exclusive. And then there was a second version of the game, or I mean, sorry, a sequel to the game, God Eater 2, which came out for both the PSP and the PlayStation Vita, but it was a Jap it was a Japanese exclusive, only in Japan. There we go. I'm starting to get the hang of it again. Oh, shoot. Oh, there we go. There we go. Charge, 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 charge. Damn. So, as you can tell, this should definitely remind you guys a lot of Monster Hunter. Like, it's, it's pretty much undeniable. Like, you can see the Monster Hunter in this game easy. Oh, you punk. I'm going to put that away so I don't drain all my stamina. One, two, three. Oh, he knocked me out of it just in time. One, two, three. Got him. There we go. So now he goes into like the spirit mode. I don't know all the details because I wasn't paying attention last time I played through the game. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm out of stamina. I've exposed the Oni's essence, it says. And there you go. It pulls you out of this... Whatever it is, dream of the past. Are we satisfied? Verily we are. Yeah, let's skip that. The story in this game is not important, guys. Trust me. I mean, you could skip the story. It's all about the fighting the monsters part, just like in Monster Hunter. Story is completely unnecessary. Same thing with, uh... Same thing with God Eater. He's the district captain of the Slayers in this village. So you're basically a Slayer. You go out and kill Oni, which is Japanese. Well, it's the Japanese word people say for demon. Um, the more you learn about foreign languages, the more you know that there aren't really a lot of direct translations. Oni means demon in a sense, but it's not the same type of demon that um, the average American would think of. Like when Americans use the term demon, we tend to think of demons from, from uh, Christian mythos. Whereas in Japan... It's from a very different mythos, uh, different mythology, um, different background. Oka. When they put the line over the O, that means it's a it's a long vowel. Um, Japanese has long and short vowels, so in this case, it's not Oka, it's Oka. Skip, 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 skip it all. I like the little fox character. This house has been empty for a long time. Oh, and the game is only in Japanese for the audio. You can zoom in for some reason. I don't know why they even bother with that. Um, the text is in English, so that's good. But yeah, the game audio itself is all in Japanese. Which is fine by me, because, you know, it just... It takes a lot for them to uh, to translate it all and then get voice actors. So it makes sense that they wouldn't want to bother. This is where you can kind of change up your equipment. If you, like... Uh, I think if you pre-ordered the game, you got some other equipment that became available here. But this should be proof to you guys that I didn't pre-order. You start the game with one of each of the most basic type of weapons. So, you know, you can swap it out at will. Just kind of play around with it. See which one suits your fancy. Like, let's say you started with the chain and sickle and it was a little more complicated than you wanted it to be. So then you could just go, go right back down to the longsword, which is probably the easiest weapon in the game to use. It's very, it's very easy to understand the concept of the sword. Are you ready for the next stop on the tour? Yes! Let's do it! An alarm bell sounds in the distance. <gasps> An attack! Sorry, we'll have to do this later. Come with me. It's time to fight. Excellent. Let's get right into it. Why waste time? Toki Din Kiwami is also available on the PlayStation Vita. Definitely recommend picking up the PS4 version because... I mean, really, you can play it on the PS Vita, but it's best to have a full size controller to play a game like this. It's just a more enjoyable experience and it's easier to play it that way. Alright, now we'll go talk to you. Not even you, but you. You'll notice it's a very familiar format to God Eater, Freedom Wars, 
Monster Hunter. Very familiar. Um, even familiar to people who played like Ragnarok Odyssey, games of that type, and also um, Fantasy Star. I think the more recent like Vita or PSP versions of Fantasy Star. All right, I'm ready. Go and come back alive. Well, I shall try. Oh, do we need to talk to her first and get the mission? Yeah, we do. Okay. So you go to her, you pick up your mission, and then you leave by going to your exit point. Very familiar format, like I said, for those who played some of the other games that are like this. And if you haven't picked up either Tokiden or Tokiden Kiwami, obviously get Ki Kiwami first. This is your like spirit mode or whatever. You get to see some things that aren't normally available in uh, normal mode. Let's see if there's anything here. No, there usually isn't anything here. This is the intro area. But yeah, I think that gives us a little boost. And of course, all the areas are split up into little segments just like they are in the other games. Whoops. Wrong button! Petrified plant. You don't do a lot of gathering in this game. There are occasionally things to pick up. And if I hit this mode, you'll see things that aren't available in normal mode. Like right there. Straight ahead, there's something that I can't get in normal mode. Ah, oh, shoot. I hit the wrong button. Why did I do that? And then you have a lock-on. You just hold the uh, L1 button. And that'll lock on for you. These are some of the little guys that you don't need to worry so much about. Oh, I'll get back here. Bam. Gotcha. And then I'll stop that, because uh, that's an extra powerful attack. It's like a buff on your weapon, but it does drain your stamina over time, so you got to be careful. And you do need stamina to dodge as well. And part of this is figuring out the best combos to maximize the efficiency of your weapon. And then after you kill the enemy, you can pick up resources from it. I gotta remember which button it is, though. I'll figure it out. Okay, here we go, here we go. Is it this button? Yep, there we go. No, 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 give it to me. Hold down R1, there we go. Oh, uh, where's that item that we saw that we couldn't see in normal mode? Yep, see? See how you can't see it right now? There it is. Oh, shoot. And the other cool thing is you can charge like you guys just saw earlier. Bam! Take down the Oni. Obviously, these are mainly your chattel, or, or essentially, this is just cannon fodder. You're meant to be able to defeat them quickly and easily. Um, the real challenge in this game are the bosses. The real challenge is the bosses, are the bosses, something like that. Grammar, guys. Stop following me around. Go get your own, Olka. Okay. Let's go pick up this thing. I gotta check out what the mission is in this. Sometimes the mission is to kill a certain number of a certain kind of enemy, or to pick up so many of an item. Pretty simple stuff, usually. And then, of course, you have the majority of your missions, your staples, your bread and butter, which is to defeat a big monster. Ah, oh, darn it. Nope, wasn't close enough. This is actually the first time I've actually uh, used the longsword. I've always picked other weapons. Mo mostly use the spear. I've been a big fan of the spear. And boom. There we go. Ooh. Close up of the nasty beast. I think this is a Mitama. They also, a lot of this is like 
older style Japanese language. So if you're studying Japanese, I don't recommend <laughs> trying to listen to the way people in this game talk. A lot of it's not really normal Japanese you'd use on an everyday basis. Got it. Thank you very much. Minamoto no Yonimitsu. New Mitama acquired. Let's see. Leaving Battlefield. How do we... I think we can equip the Mitama outside of combat. Yep, that was it. Defense of Utakata. And just like the other games, it'll leave you in the game for a little bit so you can kind of run around and pick up the final items that are lying about. Mission accomplished. The other fun thing about games like this is that uh, it's easy to pick up and play. And you can play for short little segments. You don't have to sit down and invest, you know, an hour or two hours into it. You can play for short, you know, 10 to 20 minute segments pretty easily. Finishing a mission here or there. With load screens. I want to get my little fox character. I think I do get a fox character that follows me around. Functions kind of like the uh, felines from uh, Monster Hunter. Do you know who's Mitama you released from that Oni? Minamoto no Yorimitsu. A fitting Mitama for you. You always get that one. I've gotten that one every single time I've started a new character. You're back. Welcome back. I'm so happy you're safe. Of course you are. Skipping all the dialogue. Now, the game looks pretty good. It's in 1080p, obviously, and plays fairly well with a good frame rate. But uh, don't expect it to be real impressive. It's basically an upscaled port of a Vita game. So, you know, don't, don't expect this to be the best-looking PlayStation 4 game around. And it's not, obviously. One thing I was a little disappointed by is that they charged $60 for this new. And given that it's an upscaled Vita port... I feel like they probably should have charged 40 bucks. I think 40 bucks is a reasonable price for an upscaled port. What is Mitama? Why do Oni have the Mitama? What is this place? Okay. Goodbye, Shikimi. You can equip a Mitama and a weapon at the start menu. There we go. So now it's available. So you basically slot your Mitama to the weapon. So this one has attack up. So that's pretty basic, attack up. And your and uh, your Mitama also level up as well with use, so that's cool. Let's see if there's anything else critical here. Look at that guy's armor. Wouldn't that be nice to have that armor? Samurai. And the smith who will make us new stuff when we bring him the right equipment. Okay. He can also upgrade your weapons. Let's see if we can make anything cool. Nothing. That's what I figured. Can you upgrade my longsword? By landing attacks on Oni, your compatibility with your equipment will increase. When your compatibility reaches its maximum level, you can then fortify the equipment up to nine times. Equipment is more effective when fortified. Fortifying a weapon can sometimes lead to the appearance of more sockets. Mitama equipped and secondary sockets do not affect your battle style, but you are able to use their boosts. You do not have sufficient haku. So we need to get more haku. I don't know how much Haku we have at the moment. Maybe 250? Yeah, we have 250. Okay, so we need to use that more in order to fortify it. Can we upgrade any armor? Nope. Okay. You can't fully use the uh, camera in these areas. Like, when you try to use the camera button, it just zooms in. Just like in God Eater... Burst or God Eater 2, just like in um, Monster Hunter. So these games are very similar in many ways. Similar in ways you wouldn't even think they would be. Like when you get to the towns, you can't fully rotate the camera around, which is interesting. And of course you can switch out your weapon here for another basic starting weapon. We'll stick with the longsword for now. Go introduce yourself to those three. They'll prove useful to you. Ah, I should have been paying attention. Alright, here's one of the guys. I think this is the third guy we gotta introduce ourselves to. Shoe sweet. 
I mean, you can ask him about stuff, get information about different Oni and whatnot, but I know everything I need to know. Goodbye, buddy. So now we're ready to roll. You've spoken to them all. Unite me, Tama, with your soul and draw out their power. It's the way to do it. You should get some rest. I'm fine. Getting enough rest is one of your duties, too. Come back here tomorrow. Alrighty, fine. Time to go to my room. And then you can, of course, save in town, which I recommend you do. You can transfer your save game from um, a Vita version of this game as well. I thought you could import it from the original Tokiden, but it didn't seem to find mine, my game, which is all the better. For the purposes of a playthrough, I'd like to start from the beginning anyway. Even though the graphics are somewhat simplistic, I don't know, they're kind of nice in their simplicity here. I don't mind. So you are my liberator. I thank you for freeing me from those beasts. I am Minamoto no Yorimitsu. I was one of the first of the demons who slay demons. The thought of fighting the Oni again makes my spirits soar. Well, excellent. I look forward to fighting the Oni with you, too. Now shut up. Chapter 1, Guardians of the Eye of Truth. The next morning. Alright, well, let's save it, first of all. I just noticed that they're, like, roasting fish here. I've never really taken the time to notice that. That would stink up the room, wouldn't it? Saving. Auto upload in progress. With a running little fox. Sure takes a while, doesn't it? Save complete. Return to main menu. Nope. What's this? Aha! Uh -huh. See, this is where you can kind of keep an eye on what's been going on. Like an encyclopedia. So if there are any terms you don't know, you can talk to... Um, that guy that we saw in the other room, or go there in your room and get information. This guy will have tons of new information for you all the time, but most of it's just like reading about the Oni and background lore and all that, which is fairly interesting if you're into that sort of thing. I don't really care too much about it. Donating Haku to the offering box can activate special boosts. The offering box will offer more effective boosts with increased use. I want to hang on to my Haku. Oh, there you are. Did you sleep well? From today forth, you will be required to take on Oni slaying missions. Sounds good to me. Let's slay our first big Oni. You can undergo training and check your medals in the repository by speaking to Yamato. That was also the name of the, uh, one of the, um, big warships during World War II. You can go get training in, in any of the weapons. So let's do the basic sword training, just because I've never used the longsword before. And if you are going to use a new weapon, or if you're just starting out in the game, I do definitely recommend the training sections. They really do teach you uh, how to best make use of your weapon. Fast attack is your square, and your strong attack is your triangle. Sword attacks fundamentally center around fast attacks, which can be easily linked to form combos and more powerful strong attacks. Okay. So we're going to lock on. Fast. And then throw in some strong attacks. And then it gives you some of your chains. So you've got the four hit chain, which is four squares in a row. You've got your three strong attack chain. Then you've got your strong, fast, strong, strong. Then we've got your fast, fast, strong, fast, strong, fast, fast. I didn't really feel like I kept that chain going. The Twisting Slash is a slashing attack which can be used on the move. It allows you to evade enemy attacks and change your body position. Nice. So square in uh, cross at the same time. Ah, check that out guys. Isn't that cool? And you can aim it too. That is awesome. I didn't know I had that. See, I'm so glad I did this training. I would have never figured that out. So that's a great way to get out of there. Like, let's say you're trying to get out of dodge. Just use that. Hold down triangle release press square or triangle the vacuum slash is executed by building up strength and then unleashing a powerful shock wave at your enemy the longer you build up strength before releasing the more powerful the attack becomes press square or triangle after executing the move to produce a follow-up attack so really this game i mean this game is probably a little easier than it should be but it's all about knowing how to to get the good combos going so we'll hold down this one two three and i think that's max charge yeah three is max charge then hit uh, square or triangle. Let's try triangle. There we go. Let's try another one. 
One, two, three. We'll do square. One, two, three. Triangle again. Initiate attack and release. Special move. Gouge. Press or hold down circle. Gradually uses up focus. Hold down to sheed sword while attacking. This move allows you to inflict a stab wound on your enemy with a focus infused blade. You can turn the move into a shadow gouge by holding the button down, which will use up more focus, but will make the increase well, but will make the increase the likelihood. <laughs> but will increase the likelihood of inflicting a significant wound. By attacking the same spot repeatedly, the wound becomes deeper. Finally, by releasing the attack, the wound is gouged open, inflicting more damage proportionate to the depth of the wound. So as you see, this game gets more and more complicated as you want to get deeper into it. Unfortunately, many of the battles are easy enough to where you don't have to get this advanced into it like you would say in Monster Hunter. So that's one request I would have is that to, to offer an option to make the game more difficult. Press or hold down circle, gradually uses up focus. Inflict damage, release gouge after initiating, and boom! See that right there, how we did a final hit when we released it? Alright, let's try that again. Gotta let our stamina regenerate. Two, three, four. Massive damage. This powerful slash can only be executed when your weapon gauge is full. Alright, so that weapon gauge is the little... Uh, the little circle with the sword in it in the upper left corner. Any small Oni struck will be killed, regardless of how much health they have left. While large Oni will have a body part destroyed, which is cool, by the way. And that is triangle plus circle. And let's try it out. Bam! That's awesome. See, it's an instant kill on the little dudes. And now we can put our knowledge to the test by killing these guys. One, two, three, okay. So there's some good combos. One, okay, he's dead. One, two, three. <laughs> That's such an awesome move. I don't know if you get to keep these items afterwards, even because they're during training. Maybe you do. I'll grab them anyway. Bam! That's it. So that's our sword training, guys. So we learned a couple cool things about it. I find there's so much uh, there's so much to each weapon that you oftentimes forget about all the special moves they have. Mission accomplished. And of course, go through that training for whatever weapon you decide you're going to use. It's definitely worth it. I don't think this game's available for the PlayStation 3. No, I'm pretty sure it's not. But uh, if you have a Vita, you can get it and play on the go. Uh, I was playing Tolkien, the original Tolkien, on my uh, PlayStation Vita through the PS TV, PlayStation TV. Where do we go now? Oh, probably this this uh, young lady get our missions. You'll be going to her a lot. This is basically where you get your missions. Floating skulls and slow but steady. So slay ten blazing souls or slay three drumbles. So this, these are pretty simple. You know, these are kill quests. Familiar to anyone who's played an MMO. Go kill five zebra. Or go collect five zebra hooves. Alright. Ikozo. I think that gives you like a little blessing or something. I don't know. It never really tells me. Stuff I don't know. Stuff I should know. Alright. You see these little imp dudes? You don't actually have to kill them as part of this quest. These guys are the ones we want.
Got him. We'll shoot that. Suck up our resources here. Oh, and you also get to power yourself up using your um, Mitama. Let's do Carnage. I think that increases damage. Of course, we can uh, absorb their stuffs here. Tenacious Claw, nice. I think there's some more souls. Yeah, there they are. Let's go get this guy. Come here, buddy. One, two, three. Gotcha. That was quick and easy. Soil. Let's see what you got, buddy. Oh, bam. Gosh, that's such an awesome move. I'm glad I learned about that. It's a great way to start a fight, too. I think... I gotta figure out... I gotta remember what the button is for running. Um, what is the button for running? Alright, let's see. Oh, we can't go that way. Let's see if there are any special items here that we can't see in normal mode. I gotta admit, though, on, uh, on the full... Uh, on the big screen, on PlayStation 4, this mode looks like crap. <laughs> this this mode looked a lot cooler on the Vita version of the game, on the little Vita screen. I'm trying to figure out what the button is for running. Is there a button to sheath my weapon? I don't know. Well, whatever. Red clay, awesome. Boom. I think we've only got like two or three more to kill. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Free attack, aid, and follow. Oh, I think you can give commands to your uh, to your teammates. You can lock on from quite a ways away, too. I love the way she rolls like that. It's like a somersault. I think it's just one more now. Oop, oh, item to pick up. Some of the music in this game is awesome, but some of it is not so great. Like this song right here. This one kind of just drones on. It has that very, like, Japanese feel to it. Asian-Japanese feel. There we go. I think this will be our last one. Nope, not quite. Maybe one more. Let's see if there are any hidden items here. Nope. Bam, she got it. We'll check for any hidden items here as well. Although I think I got the one that was in here. These last few seconds we have, come on! We got eight seconds, seven seconds, absorb it. Five, four, three, two, we got it, red eye. Alright, let's see if we have enough Haku to uh, upgrade our weapon. Or fortify our weapon. Interesting, fortify. Same word they use in Bloodborne. I 
It's just a really simple game in many ways. Though when you get to the big Oni, you can start to like chop off their body parts. And oftentimes it's like a spiritual way that you chop their body part off. It's it's it just sounds weird if I explain it to you. It'll make more sense if you see it in action. Of course, like any of these games, you have to get through these like less interesting, you know, beat the little kill the little dudes first before you get to the big ones. Some future ideas I have for playthroughs on my channel even include some retro games. Uh, like, I'm thinking when I'm playing through games to record for, like, episodes of my, um, reviews, like my Fox Kinda review series, or my Fox Nostalgia review series, I might go ahead and do a Let's Play of it while recording the footage. Then that'll allow me to create more content. I can create a Let's Play while simultaneously getting the footage I need to do my review. Might not be a bad idea. Uh, what are we supposed to kill in this? Not the imps. Not the imps, so let's get out of here. I don't want to waste time killing the imps. There should be a way... Darn it! There we go. Actually, I'll kill these guys. Why not? There should be a way for me to sheathe my weapon and run. I just can't remember what it is. The controls are different whether you're playing on the Vita, obviously, or on the PlayStation 4. Any special items here? No. Oh, those are the things we're supposed to kill right there. The drugs or dredglings or whatever they're called. Well, while she kills that guy, I'm going to go grab this item. done. Large fang. Yeah, that's how to run. When you're not sheathed, you hold the uh, R1. So I just gotta figure out how to sheath my weapon. Then I know how to run. Boom! Get two, two for one special. And let's power ourselves up with the carnage bonus. Oh, there we go. That worked. I guess to sheath... Oh, while well, you're... Okay, I think I get it. Snakeskin. Alright, I got it. I got it. I know how to do it now. You can sheathe by hitting the uh, R1 while moving, while constantly moving. Sometimes you kind of have to wait around for some of the enemies to uh, respawn to knock them out. In the meantime, I can make sure I don't miss anything from secret mode. Yeah, this looks like crap on the PS4 version. That's too bad. It does drain your stamina, so you can't hold on to it forever. Yeah, it's not going to let us through there. On the Vita version, you activated this by tapping the back of the, the Vita, like the touchpad part of it. But it still worked on uh, PSTV. I guess there was, yeah, there was another way to do it on the PSTV. Using the controller. There we go. Whoop, nope, not that one. This one, there we go. Bam! Mission accomplished. Tenacious Claw. Alright, is there anything in here? Any secret stuff I haven't picked up yet? Sometimes you'll you'll spot something at the last minute, like right there, see? And then you'll be running for it, and like your battle, your uh, leaving battlefield countdown timer is like right on the uh, the second there, and you just barely make it to it, or you miss it. But no biggie. It's usually nothing critical. Okay, we should be able to fortify our weapon now.
make it more powerful. And of course you can get uh, other weapons throughout the game. And armor sets, which is cool. I didn't pre-order the game, so I didn't get some of those free armor sets that come with pre-orders. But you guys know, if you've been following along with me and, and everything, that I'm not a big fan of pre-orders. I'm not 100% against all pre-orders. I just, uh, I disagree with most pre-orders. On a fundamental level. It's a nice village. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, thank you. A new mission has been added. Coolness. Uh, oh, by the way, I think you can save right here, if I'm not mistaken. The portal stone. No, oh, no, this is a portal go online. Yes, there is online multiplayer, guys. Really cool, just like in Monster Hunter. I'm usually content to play uh, offline by myself most of the time, though. Ah, he's out of copper ore, so he needs some. Okay, I'll go get your copper ore for you, buddy. What are you going to do for me, though? Create a weapon. Um, oh, okay, so we have the materials we need to create these weapons. The problem is these are the basic weapons we already have, so there's no point in creating one of them. We already have them. But we can fortify our longsword. Boom. There we go. But not again. Okay. Can we create any armors? No. Can we upgrade our armor? Yes, we can. Oh, not that. We can upgrade the Slayer's Gloves, the Leggings, or the Helm. What will it do to upgrade it? Give us one addition. I'll go upgrade it. Why not? Might be a waste, but whatever. I want my little fox character. Where was that little fox? I just saw a little fox running around. Hey, buddy. Aw, oh, he's sleeping? Sad? Something. And it's my house. In the online multiplayer stone. Alright, let's go ahead and save and call it there, guys. That'll be episode one of Toki Den Kiwami on the PlayStation 4. If you guys like the game, obviously you can pick it up. Hopefully, uh, if things work out, maybe we can do some multiplayer here. Do some multiplayer live on stream, and I'll upload some of those as parts of the playthrough. Until then, guys, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, I'm Fox with Fox Hill Plays. Make sure to subscribe to me here at Fox Hill Plays and also at Fox Hill Games, my main channel. You can click the Fox Hill Games icon at the bottom. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. That's where I love to keep up with people. There's also a Facebook if you'd like to do that. There's also a Twitch.tv. Links are all in the description. And if you want to see more of my content, there's two videos here you can click on. They're both awesome, so try them both out. I'll see you guys next time.